attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, my name is Barb Bruno. I want to welcome you to our webinar today. And the topic of today's webinar is why not you and why not now? And it's interesting, several times in my life I've had to ask myself that question when I've hesitated about taking a move that I thought was going to be good. Um, I was a single mom for 15 years, and so all of my decisions were based on, you know, if I make a mistake, it's going to cost my family. I have to make sure that I can support my kids. You know, and so there were always things that were in the back of my mind, and sometimes they did prevent me from moving forward when I knew I should have. And I learned that as long as I have solid information that what I'm going to do is take calculated risks. I don't do anything just on the spur of the moment. But what I want to ask all of you on this call, because every one of you have been following my information, you've downloaded you know, uh, information off of our website. And so is 2019 the year you finally decide to take charge and own your own business? I think that if you look at every statistic that's out there right now, it's amazing how many um, self-employed people there are right now. And even by 2020, over 50% of the workforce is going to be working flexible. The workforce is really changing. And every indication is that staffing and recruiting are going to have record years, the best we've ever seen between 2020 and 2030. And this has been predicted for the last 15 or 20 years, and there's many reasons why. So timing is perfect. But do you really love what you're doing for someone else? I mean, you've got to ask yourself that question. And are you, are you earning what you're worth? When you look at your W-2 right now, or if you're in another country, if you look at your year-to-date earnings, um, is that what you feel you're worth? And if you stay at your job, will 2019 be any different? I've had people that have downloaded information, you know, two years ago, and they still haven't moved in. Every time I talk to them, they're still thinking about it and calculating things. Um, eventually, you either have to walk away or you have to make a decision that you're going to go off on your own. And it's not an easy decision. Uh, when I first opened my business, I kept my full-time job, and I was working two and three jobs until I finally figured this profession out because I didn't have a mentor. I didn't have a coach. Uh, no one would talk to at that point. This was over 30 years ago, and I didn't even have the Internet to give me a lot of information. But I can also tell you, if you're spending a lot of time researching information on the Internet, we call that the information highway. I think it's the misinformation highway. There is so much information out there, which is the only reason I do YouTube videos and I write articles and I do a lot of postings because I'm trying to get accurate information out there because I don't want any of you to get hurt. You know, if you go into this business, you want to have the best chance of succeeding. If you answered no to any of those questions, you know, if you answered, no, I don't love my job, no, I'm not earning what I'm worth, then how do you plan to change things? You know, will you finally take control of your life once and for all? Because you're the only person that can do that. You've probably thought of tons of reasons not to go into business. And I T-square everything out. I learned how to a Benjamin Franklin close years ago. So whenever I'm making a major decision, what I do is I put two large capital T's on a sheet of paper. And this might help all of you. You know, draw two capital T's on a sheet of paper. Um, and on the, left, on the left side of the T, put on the top of that, Stay in your job, and on the right part, the right T, put, you know, start your own business. And then on the left side of the line going down, when you say, you know, don't do anything, stay in your job, put all the pros of staying in your job, and then put all the cons of staying in your job. And then look at owning an own business and list the pros and cons, one on the left-hand side of the line going down, one on the right-hand side of the line going down. And I'm going to tell you, you're going to come up with a lot of reasons why you should still stay in your job. Uh, but you'll also come up with a lot of reasons why owning your own business might make more sense. It's the same thing when you go to do the pros and cons of starting your own business. And a lot of the cons are, you know, it is risky. You know, you might go into debt. Um, you'll probably lose sleep. Uh, you might work long hours. Um, you lose the security of the paycheck if you call that security. I'm sure all of you know people that had their jobs disappear or they were downsized or right-sized or all of a sudden they walked in one day and their job didn't exist or their company didn't exist. And so I'm sure these are some of the things you're thinking about. But what I want to focus on today are some of the advantages of owning a business. Number one, you control your own destiny. You know, job security basically doesn't exist in today's business world. When you own your own business, you are the CEO of your destiny and future, not someone else. And think about all the money you've made for other people. 
and all the things you've done for other companies, is it time for you to you know, take those talents and do it for yourself? Number two is financial independence. This is probably the top reason people go into business for themselves. Imagine unlimited earning potential of being able to create the lifestyle you currently only dream of. Money doesn't buy happiness, but next to good health, money has the greatest impact on your life. If you have money, you have choices. If you don't have money, you don't have choices. The tax advantages are extreme. If you own your own business, right now you earn a living, you pay taxes, and then you pay your bills. When you own your own business, you earn money, you pay your expenses first, and then you pay taxes. And there are also endless tax write-offs for business owners, and the tax laws are getting better and better for business owners. Number four is security. You know, have you ever lived in fear of being laid off, downsized, or fired? You know, think about the joy of being your own boss. You run the business, and you don't have to worry about someone controlling your future. One of the shows I love to watch, my favorite TV show, is the TV show when I'm trying to think of the name of Shark Tank. Um, and the reason I love Shark Tank is I watch people coming in, and, and if you ever want to know if you've got what it takes to, to own your own business, watch Shark Tank. Because, you know, if you come in there and they find that you're hedging or you're not able to make decisions or you don't know your numbers or you haven't done your homework, you don't get an investment. And I think it's one of the best negotiating training shows on TV. In fact, I always tell people in the staffing and recruiting profession to watch Shark Tank. I just returned from two national conferences, and I can tell you people are having record years all over the country, but there's still recruiters that are failing. They're working really hard, but they're failing because they don't know what to do. You know, they're, they're not getting the training they need. They're not doing what they need to do every day to succeed. And understand something. No one can be responsible for your success if you open your own business. That falls on you. So you have to have the confidence and you have to have the tenacity to know that this is something you can do. You know, I've had people ask me, do you find me the clients? Do you find me the candidates? No, we teach you how to do it, but we can't make calls for you. You know, this is something that you have to do. But wouldn't it be nice to know that instead of, you know, always making somebody else successful, that you're doing it for yourself right now? And our profession has never been more respected than it is right now. You're also going to be recognized as an expert. You know, when you open your business, as a business owner, you have a chance to establish your expertise and be recognized as an expert in your field. And you don't necessarily have to place um, in a field that you know. You've got to, one of the most important decisions you make is what niche are you going to go into? What segment of the profession are you going to specialize in? I talk to people all the time that try to go in the staffing and recruiting business, but they made the wrong decisions when they opened their business. They selected a niche that wasn't going to be lucrative. They only did direct hires rather than doing direct hires and contract, which is the most lucrative business model. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, they were working hard, but set themselves up for failure because they didn't know what decisions to reach. Number six, it takes determination. If you're a business owner, you have to learn to become dedicated to your business, which will positively affect your, your personal life. Now, will you work long hours when you first start? Of course you're going, or you're going to. Are you going to have more rejection than success? Of course you're going to. When you open a business and you started something new, I compare it to boot camp in the military. It's painful. You know, because you're out of your comfort zone. Right now, you wake up, you get dressed, and you do what you're doing, and you're comfortable. And once you walk away from that and you own your own business, it can be scary, and you're not in your comfort zone. So you have to have the determination. You have to be able to make decisions. You have to be able to plow forward regardless of obstacles that you're going to hit. And will there be obstacles? Absolutely, positively, yes. But we'll show you how to get around them. Number seven is recognition. There's thousands of local, regional, and national awards recognizing successful entrepreneurs in all fields and industries. And there's nothing to stop you from getting business owner of the year, getting recognized by the, the niche that you place in. You know, and if recognition is something that motivates you when you own your own business, there's tremendous ways to earn the recognition. And when you earn the recognition, that just generates more business. So it's also good for business. Number eight is change. You're going to learn to anticipate trends and reinvent yourself in your business throughout your life as an entrepreneur. If someone told me I was going to be in the same business 
30 years ago, I would have said absolutely not. Because I think if I was diagnosed as a child, they probably would have diagnosed me as having ADHD. Because I got great grades, I was a straight A student, but I went to Catholic school and on the right hand side there were check marks. And I got all 12 check marks, every report card. And the check marks were things like interrupts others, talks too much, um, you know, can't stay focused. And so as a, as a result of that, I never thought I would find a profession that could challenge me for 30 years. I thought I would change jobs. I didn't know that I would have this business this long, but it constantly changes. You know, we're dealing with people on both sides of it. The economy changes, the marketplace changes. And with all that change, it's a new job. There's no two days alike. And you have to constantly reinvent yourself, you know, and anticipate trends in order to stay profitable. You can't stay in business 30 years unless you're a change agent, unless you're willing to take risks and you're willing to anticipate trends and reinvent yourself in your business throughout your life as an entrepreneur. But guess what? You get to do this. You're not sitting there waiting for someone else to do this. Number nine is pride. When you build a successful business, it's just a great feeling. You had a vision, you executed your vision, and now you reap the benefits. And if you decide to enter the staffing and recruiting business, you're going to be in business of changing people's lives for the better. My firm has placed over 10,000 people in jobs. And if I don't do anything else in my life, if I don't accomplish one more thing in my life, no one can take that away. You know, I know I've had a tremendous impact on many, many people, not only the people that I've placed in jobs, but also the people that I've employed, because I've given them a lifestyle that they may have never got on their own. And I've taught them a skill set that all they need is a telephone and a computer, and they can earn whatever they want to earn for the rest of their life. And that gives me great pride. You know, how many people wake up in the morning and go to work? Even when I was on a plane flying to the National Conference, a gentleman sitting next to me on the plane said, what do you do for a living? And I said, I change people's lives. And he said, oh, are you a psychologist? And I went, well, kind of. Are you a teacher? Well, kind of. Are you? And no matter what he asked me, because we play so many roles in people's lives. We help companies attain their goals and objectives by giving them the talent they need. We help candidates enhance their life by helping them make their next logical career move. And so the services we offer help both companies as well as our candidates. But how many people do a job that's that satisfying? And I can tell you there is such a need for top talent. It is so hard to find people right now, and that's when we make the most money. If it was easy to find people, nobody would need us. And everybody's using job boards and are using all these methods, and they're trying to pay to get lists. We know how to recruit people. Eight out of 10 people are not happy in their jobs right now. Isn't that sad? And that's worldwide, that only 18% of people working are happy right now. And I find that statistic amazing. And it's been at that, it's been at 18% for going on three years now. It's over two years. And I find that just amazing. It's never been that low. In the 30 years I've been in this business, it's never been that low. It usually hovers at about 50%. It's 18%. So people are literally working in jobs they hate. And, and as a result, they're not doing a great job. And so their employers would probably like to let them go. Um, and you benefit by both of those things. You benefit because people are open to listen to new opportunities. And most employers would upgrade people that are working for them. And that's what we help them do. You know, so you could take great pride that you're going to change people's lives for the better every single day. Number 10 is your legacy. When you own your own business, you can create the lifestyle of your dreams and you can build something you can either sell or you can pass it on to next generations, depending on what you want to do. You know, what kind of legacy do you want to leave when you're gone? Number eight, you can create. There is nothing more satisfying than to know that you're responsible, you know, for the success of your business and of your employees. Your ideas provide your employees with the opportunity, you know, to basically earn a living and provide for their families so they can realize their own dreams. And in staffing and recruiting, you're going to place hundreds, even thousands of people in jobs. And again, you know, what a legacy you're going to leave. And you could create anything you want, you know, because it's like a blank slate when you open your new business, you know, and you're the CEO. You're the one that create what you want. It's rewarding um, and it's fun to build your reputation and brand. So people start referring to you as the expert in your field. And you might say as a new person, I'm afraid of doing this. Like, how am I going to find clients that are going to hire from me? How am I going to find candidates? Why will somebody use me 
as opposed to an experienced recruiter. Trust me, um, we will teach you how to sound like an expert, and we will show you how to, how to recruit that passive talent. And a company will use anybody that will give them the candidate they need to hire because it's so hard to find talent right now. So if you have the best candidates, they're going to use you regardless of your years of experience. They don't care about your experience. All they care about is, are you going to give people to me that are going to make me look good if we hire them? Are you going to give me people that I can hire that are going to give us a good return on our investment, the salary we're paying them? And so we'll talk about how to establish your brand. Even as a new business owner, you can go out there and sound like an expert. And I've always said that people in my profession, if I look at all the people that I know in our profession, and I've done 20 conferences this year, and I've done several in-house training sessions for major companies that are trying to go like from 10 to 15 million or 20 to 30 million. And so they bring me in-house to show them how to escalate their business. But the one thing I know about everybody in my profession is I think we're social workers who like money. I think that we all have a big heart. We all really want to help people. We really want to make a mark. We really want people to be better off for having met us. And we want to do good in the world. You know, most people that I know in our profession are pretty philanthropic. The nice part about the philanthropic endeavors is when you create a profitable business, you can make the decision on what worthy causes you want to, you want to back. Being able to give back to your community is one of the greatest benefits of being an entrepreneur. You know, I have a lot of people that call me and they want to open their own business and I listen to them and what they're going to go into is not going to make them profits. I can just tell they picked the wrong niche. They're not going in the right segment of the business and, and, and they're a do-gooder. And I say, you know what, let, let me show you how you can earn a lot of money and then you can donate to worthy causes. You don't want your business to be a hobby. You don't want your business to be nonprofit. You know, and so what we teach you how to do is set up a profitable business so then you can back the philanthropic endeavors that you care about, and you're going to have an impact. Have you ever dreamed about changing the world? I mean, even as a young person, I remember when I was really young, I went to a Dale Carnegie course, and they said, and I was young, I was in my early 20s, and they said, what do you want in your tombstone? And I immediately thought of pizza, because tombstone pizza. And the, the trainer was saying, no, what do you want written on your tombstone when you die? Well, I couldn't even think about that. I mean, I was in my early 20s, and I was like, this guy is really morbid. But then as I, as I, you know, sat back and really thought about what I want to do and what I want on my tombstone, it's not about the date that you were born and the date that you died. It's about the dash in between. What does that dash represent? What did you do with the life? We're all kind of put on this earth to figure out who we're supposed to be. I truly believe that. And so if you feel like, you're, you know, you're being called to help other people as you create the lifestyle you want for yourself and your family. And if you really do have some big dreams about having an impact, this is the greatest way to go. I have a friend in the staffing and recruiting profession who owns one of the largest firms in the world. Um, it's valued at over $2 billion. He owns Express Personnel. And he was on my board of directors when I was the chairman of the board. I've trained his organization over and over again. He's a very dear friend of mine. And he started out just like you. In fact, he started out working from home, and he has built a $2 billion organization. I have some people that call and want to start their own business, and I convince them not to because I see something that's not going to work. Um, I worry about their ability to take risks. I worry about their ability to make a decision. Or I worry about that they're, they're going to go into a niche, even though I'm telling them they're not going to make any money. They're insisting on going into a niche that I know is going to be a failure, and so I don't, I don't have them buy our program. Because after a while, I have to protect certain people. And not everybody is meant to own their own business. But if you've got the drive and the tenacity, and, and this is something that, that you've thought about for a while, you know, you have to have thought about this for a while, there is no better time to do this than right now. Because I'm telling you, every single human being that is out there that is predicting what's going to go on in the staffing and recruiting profession is saying that the, the decade 2020 to 2030 uh, is going to be the best we've ever seen. And so timing could be great. Now, all benefits mentioned are all possible in the staffing and recruiting profession. I notice many of you have come on my call late, and I understand that many of you are working. And we recorded this, so if you signed up for the call, I don't want you worried that you missed everything that I've been talking about for the last 20 minutes, <clears throat> because we're going to send you this recording. But I can tell you, 
There's no limits on what you can build. You can decide, I just want to do it myself. I want to work from home. I want something where there's, I don't need an office. I just want to work on my own and I just want to earn as much money as I can. I don't want to have any employees. Or you could build an organization that turns into a franchise group. You could have multiple offices. You can build a multi-million dollar organization. But, you know, you're going to build whatever makes sense for you. You're going to spend your life helping others attain their dreams while you attain yours. And again, the future for our profession has never been brighter. And that's why when my sales team came to me, we've had this program now for almost two years. When we first launched the program, we launched it at a lower price. And we always do that for the first six months because we want to know it's going to work. We want to talk to the people that are in it. You know, these are people that are trying something brand new. And so we always discount the price. When my sales team said, can we do it right now? The, part of the reason I did it was because my sales team asked me to. And if they ask me to, I'm, I'm usually going to take consider anything that they want. The other thing is now is the time to do this because 2020 to 2030 is going to be the best time for our profession. So if you're going to do this, you want to do it now. Get your business set up. It's going to take you a couple months to three months to get it set up if you're working. And then it's going to take you, you know, two to three months to generate revenue because the average hiring um, process right now is taking five weeks. People have to give a two-week notice and they're going to pay you in 30 days. So you've got to be ready for that. You know, set this up while you're still working, but you want to have two to three months income put away, you know, so that when you do finally quit your job that you can sustain yourself for a few months until you actually start generating revenue. Once you master this profession, all you need is a phone and a computer, and you have unlimited income potential. You can live anywhere, you can go anywhere, you can do any, you work any hours you want to work. The greatest thing about being an entrepreneur is the flexibility and becoming financial independent. You can live anywhere, move anywhere, and still maintain a very profitable business. Um, I have to tell you a story. I did a, a, a conference in Denver, Colorado, and this was a couple years ago, and a woman walked in my in my room, and I probably had 150 people in the room that I was training. And this woman walked in, and quite frankly, she looked like a bag lady. I mean, she had all these bags. She had a thing she rolled in with. She had all these clothes on. She had a babushka on, and she didn't talk to anybody. She just walked in. She stacked all her packages in the back of the room and sat down at one of the tables. And so I thought she was at the wrong conference, but I thought maybe she needed help. So I went back, and I introduced myself, and I said, hi. And her name was Susan, and she said, hi, Barb. And I said, um, I, I said, are you here for the employment conference? And she said, yes. And she said, I came here specifically to hear you. And I went, okay. And she said, I've been in the business almost 20 years, but I need your help. And so I normally come down from the mountain once a year to get supplies, but since you were in town, I came down now. And she said, I live up in the mountains. And I said, well, that's awesome. Well, no one was interacting with her, and, you know, and everybody was judging her by the cover, but I saw something in her eyes, and I instantly, I sat with her at lunch. I made sure that she felt welcome because everyone else was kind of, you know, what is she doing here? Until I asked everybody in the room, how many of you produced, it was direct hire, it was a direct hire conference. I asked how many people in the room had produced over 250000 in a year, and most of them put their hand up. So then I went to four hundred. then I went to 500. But when I got to seven fifty. She was the only one that hadn't put her hand up so far. And she had her hand up that she had done more than $750,000 in placements, in direct placements that year. And everybody was staring at her. And I said, do you mind standing up? And she said, not at all. And I said, Susan, how much are you going to produce this year? And she said, right around 800000 And I said, you are? And I said, what do you place? And she said, librarians. And all of us just kind of looked at each other and went, and I even kind of like, I go, librarians? And she said, let me explain something, Barb. I lived in Washington, D.C. most of my life in the hustle and bustle. I commuted an hour and a half to get you know, to downtown D.C. for my job. And she said, I hated every day of it. And I said, what did you do? And she was a librarian in the halls of Congress. And she decided that when she wanted to change a job, there was nobody to represent her. And her dream was to live in the hills in Colorado. And she's an environmentalist. And her home that she has in the mountains of, of Denver somewhere is self-sustaining. And she's got chickens and animals and she helps the environment. And she works from home and she's not computer literate. I mean, she has a computer, but she knows every librarian in the United States and they know her. And she places librarians in major law firms 
and does 95% of her placements in Alexandria, Virginia, in Washington, D.C., and she lives in a cabin in Denver. And see, only in our profession is something like that possible. And the reason she came to my training is she was I bid between seven hundred and fifty and eight hundred thousand for five years. I can't get over that, and I feel you can teach me how to do that. Well, I told her several things that she could do because once you get good at this, you don't have to double your efforts to double your production. If you do ten percent more of everything you learn to do, you'll increase sales by thirty percent. It just works. So I told her what to do, and this year I talked to her maybe a month ago, and she's going to do one point four million this year. Last year, she did beat a million finally. This year, she's going to do 1.4. She just had to make some subtle changes in the way she did it. But she's proof that you can live anywhere. You can move anywhere and still maintain a profitable business. I know an owner that I got tired of the taxes in our country, and he's living in um, Panama, Panama City right now. And due to their tax, their, he was earning so much money, he went there, and then he didn't realize that he had to be there two years to take advantage of the, the taxes of Panama City, but he decided it was worth it. And again, you can move anywhere in the world and still own your business and still make money. All you need is a computer and a phone. You have three options when you're entering this profession. You can do what I did. I kind of went it alone and I learned by making mistakes. Um, I didn't fail, but it was extremely costly. I, I used to always think the way to learn something is to make mistakes and learn from them. And you know what I learned about 15 years ago? It's a whole lot easier to learn from someone else's mistakes than to learn from your own. It just is, you know. And so now anything I'm going to do, I go out there and see, has anybody done anything similar? And then I try to learn from their mistakes rather than always doing what I did in the past. You know, start a business I knew nothing about. I came out of real estate. I came from real estate to this profession. And the reason I did is the interest rates went up over 20%. And I was a single mom and I was scared to death. And, but I still sold real estate while I was learning this profession. You know, and so you can go it alone. And let me tell you something. If you don't have the money to invest in my program, that's why I have the site, howtostartarecruitingbusiness.com, because I write articles on there that will help you. I try to give you a lot of free information. Watch the uh, video on that site, because that video kind of walks you through the decisions you're going to make. So you're not going to be totally alone, because I'm giving you some very valid information on the site. The second choice is you can invest in a franchise. The lowest franchise right now is 75 grand. They go up to 150. I wanted to give people an option other than a franchise because you're also going to pay the uh, percentage of your sales, not of profits. When you buy a franchise, you pay a percentage of your sales for 10 years. Or you can invest in our staffing and recruiter startup tutor. This provides you with a tremendous resource that gives you a step-by-step -step process to owning and operating a profitable business. And if you go on our site, you can see everything that's included. But when you invest in our program, um, we give you step-by-step -step of what you need to do. We give you a 26-week program that shows you how to set up your business. There's a training program. I do live calls. You know, and it's a one-year program. We're here to mentor and guide you. You know, we will guide and mentor you and, and because we want to know what your goals are. And then we help you attain those goals. Our program includes the 24 lesson showing you how to set up your business, an 80-day tutor which teaches you the profession. It teaches you how to find clients. It teaches you how to find candidates. I do six live calls monthly, um, and uh, you can listen to the calls. Plus, the people that attend my calls, <coughs> some are new owners. Some have been owners for 20 years. Everybody asks me questions, so you're going to learn from the questions you're listening to that other people are asking me. You also get a 16-week type of contract tutor that teaches you the staffing side of our profession. We create a responsive website for you, and we host it for one year, and we'll host your email addresses. We also help you create your logo. Um, and so this is everything that is included in the program. Um, we also uh, give you proprietary forms, so you have all the forms you need. We give you a career portal. Remember all those job seekers we can't help? You're going to help 5% of the people that you attract. But 100% of them are going to want you to find them a job. And those are the people that are going to keep calling you. We can only place people with skills, stability, and experience. Okay, that's the only people we can place in jobs. So we have a resource for everybody else that will look like you created this career portal. And it generates passive income for you, so it pays for itself. After you're done with the training, we will also pay for your professional certification. The reason I say after you do the training is the certification is law. 
um, and you want to learn this profession, and we do do some legal training for you as well uh, before you take the exam, and, and you just want to learn the profession uh, before you go out there and try to get certified. And if you decide to do temp contract, we have um, companies that will give you the back office and the funding. Um, you know, just because you're going through our training, they know that you're being trained properly, and so they don't do as extensive, you know, checks as they do when a stranger calls them so we can give you companies that will fund your temp and contract payroll. And they're the employer of record in all 50 states. There's no prof better profession, I believe, than our profession. There's no better time to enter our profession than now. Anybody investing before November 30th, and this is only the second time I've given a discount on this program. I gave it when we first launched it, and I'm doing it now. And it is a limited discount. This discount will be there till November 30th for a one-time investment of $37.47.75 for all the resources in the it's a 12-month program. Um, this offer is not available if you want to make payments. I mean, we do have a three-payment plan for the normal price, but when we're discounted like this, it would have to be the full payment. The way that you can invest is calling our office today, um, and you've got the number there. I think most of you have talked to my office a few times, um, you know, and if you're hedging on a decision, the first thing you have to ask yourself is, do you have what it takes to be a business owner? If you've thought about this too long and you haven't taken the move, or if you've mentioned a niche to me and I've said, I don't know about that niche, um, I want you to think seriously about, is this meant for you? Because it takes a certain level of decisiveness, of tenacity, of um, passion, of risk-taking ability to succeed at our profession. And so I don't want you to do this if you're questioning yourself. If you went through this program and you heard everything I said and you're still thinking, I don't know, it might not be for you. You know, not everybody is made out to be an entrepreneur. But if you've thought about this for a while, and when I was talking to you, you know, through this webinar, I've been describing you and telling you there's no better business and there's no better time. And so I am going to open the lines for questions, and I am going to put the slide up here, you know, that this is where you can go. You can either call us, you can email us, um, and if you've been thinking about this, make this the year you finally become an entrepreneur that you were meant to be. Um, you've got more information on how to start a recruiting business.com. If you don't have the investment, I'm still here to help you. I can't personally help you, um, but I can write things. I can give you good information. So please get off the internet because there's so much junk out there that it, it really concerns me about all the, the wrong information that's out there. Um, I talked to somebody earlier today that just invested $10,000 to be coached by somebody, and the information that they gave her was so erroneous that I can't even believe that they charged her $10,000, and she's no further ahead now than she was over a year ago. And so... She's on our call, and, and she did tell me she was going to invest, but I just wanted to make sure she heard this as well before, you know, we took her investment. I wanted her to be comfortable, so, um, because she's been burnt to the tune of $10,000, and I can tell all of you, me starting on my own and not knowing what I was doing, 10 months later, I was not making money in my new business because I didn't know what I was doing, and I almost lost my house, and part of my motivation to put this startup tutor together was I don't want anybody to go through what I went through when I first went into this business. It was frightening, and, and there was no Internet. I couldn't get information. None of the competitors would talk to you, and so I, I was just blind, and finally I found a national organization that gave some training, and that's what saved me is I found a trainer that, that talked to me straight, and he kind of told me what I needed to do to turn my business around, and I listened to him, and it worked. I would love to do that same thing for you. I can help you prevent very costly mistakes. Now, I'm going to open the line for questions. When you called in, I gave you a telephone number, an access code, and a PIN number. If you put all three in, go to the control panel on the right, and on the top to the left, you see that hand. If you click on that hand, I can unmute your lines, and you and I can talk. Or if you want to type in a question, if you go down on the control panel, you see the word questions? Just click on that. Where the gray bars are, click on that. And you can type in any question that you want. If you don't want me to use your name, I just have a habit of using a person's first name to personalize if somebody asks me a question. But if you don't want me to use your first name, just type in a question and put the word confidential or anonymous before you type it in. Okay, this is from Sheila. Can I keep my job while setting up this business? Sheila, I, if you're working currently, I always suggest that you, yes, you keep your job. 
because you can set this up on the evenings and weekends. And then when you get really close, and you can even start, you know, reaching out there and making some calls and doing some interviews on evenings and weekends. When you're getting close to closing a deal, that's when I tell you to quit your job. But you have to have, you know, like three months of your expenses covered because you're not going to, you know, like I said, when you write a job, it's going to take you roughly five weeks to fill it. The person's going to give in a two-week notice, and then the company is going to pay you in 30 days. So you can see there's three months, and so you want to make sure that you gave yourself a cushion. Um, let's see here. Okay, this is from Mary. How is this different than the Good as Gold training? I'm a little confused as how to start this. Um, Mary, the Good as Gold, Good as Gold is the name of my company, and I sell many different training programs, Mary. I've got my top producer tutor. I've got, I've got, you know, many different programs that I sell. The way this program is different, this program is part of Good as Gold training. That's my company. That's my training company. This is the program I created, Mary for people that are brand new going into the business. They've never done this before, they're brand new, or maybe they work for someone else, but they've never owned their own business. So this is for people that want to own their own business. If you're currently in the staffing and recruiting profession and you want training, then we have many other different programs. What I would suggest, Mary, if you're confused at all, when we get off the phone, call Jody. Jody worked for me as a recruiter. She was one of my top producers for decades and she would listen to the salespeople in the training company and go, oh my God, they don't know the profession enough to talk to new owners. So she switched over. She's still doing some recruiting, but she's in my training company. And if, or if you want to talk to me personally, Mary, I'd be glad to talk to you. But you know, um, just call that number and we'll try to eliminate the confusion. This program is for brand new people that are starting your own business. This is from Stephen. I currently work as a corporate recruiter for a small defense contractor and I want to start my business. Um, in the DOD intelligence community, IT services, and it's a good idea. Um, it is, unless you're talking cybersecurity. Because I can tell you, Stephen, um, I know people that have been in my business for 20 years, and they put a lot of money trying to do cybersecurity. And that is such a close-knit community that they're all closing their divisions because they're just not making money. Um, IT is one of the, the hottest you know, the hottest marketplaces out there, but when you're saying intelligence, community, IT, um, I would have to know a little bit more about exactly the job titles you're thinking of doing it, but IT is one of the hottest marketplaces out there. And you want to go into a niche where you can place direct hires and you can place contractors. And obviously, in the IT area, that is very, they're very conducive to contractors as well as direct hires. And so, just a little bit of information that you gave me, Stephen, I would say yes as long as you're not talking strictly cybersecurity, because everybody that's trying it so far has failed except one guy who was in cybersecurity um, for, you know, for a period of time, and he's doing okay at it. But I've seen firms that are very, very successful try to open a division doing cybersecurity, and none of them are succeeding. And so, you know, because it's just such a close-knit community. So as long as it's not cybersecurity, my answer to your question would be yes. Um, this is from Jean. I'm a tech analyst that was fired recently and I want to be a recruiter and feel I have what it takes. I get a ton on call from Hindu recruiters all day long with no IT knowledge. How can I use that experience as leverage in Excel? Absolutely. Well, see, there's your brand. Uh, I don't know if it's John or if it's Jean. So I'm, I'm, I'm apologizing because I'm not sure if I'm saying your name right. And I don't know if it's Jean Claude or Jean. So apologize for your name, but your brand is, I was a tech analyst for years and I always got calls from recruiters who didn't know what I was doing trying to find me a job. And I finally decided to come on the other side and help people just like me make great career moves because I know your world. I've walked in your shoes. I'm, you know, and all I have to find out is your resume shows me what you've done and what you, you know, what you want to do, but it doesn't show, and it shows me what you've done and what you are doing. It doesn't show me what you want to do. So once I understand what you want to do, I can help you do that because I've walked in your shoes. Um, Mary, you said you'd love to talk to me, so when I'm done with this call, just call and ask for me, and I'd be glad to talk to you. Um, this is from Anthony. Would it be better to start with permanent placement or a temp placement? Well, number one, they're not called permanent anymore, Anthony. There's been lawsuits all over the country um, that candidates uh, sued a, a recruiting firm because they said they promised him a permanent job, and he got fired, and it went to court, and he won. So the company got sued for what he would have earned up to the age of 65, and then the company sued the recruiting firm. 
So we don't call it permanent placement anymore. We call it direct hire. We can't use the word permanent. And would it be better to start with perm, uh, direct hire or temp? Number one, you don't want to do temp. You want to do contract. The difference between the temporary business and the contract business is contract is higher, higher um, level positions, um, higher margins. And the problem is the Health Care Reform Act has taken a real hit on the temporary staffing firms because their margins are much lower. Uh, the duration of the assignments are lower, like people that are doing light industrial temp or call center temp or even some office support temp. Um, they're being squeezed right now because the Health Care Reform Act is all but wiping out their profit margin because the clients won't pay more and yet the expenses of the staffing firms have really gone up. So you want to do contract and you want to do some contract and direct. They really do, they do sort of complement each other. And so when you're going out there, you know, it'll be a different person that you'll talk to. Different people hire direct hires than hire contractors, but they complement each other. And so it depends on what niche you choose and make sure you pick a niche where they hire contractors and direct hires because some professions like sales don't hire contractors. Let's see, confidential. What if you are dis what if you are decisive? You want to start a firm, however, unsure yet on the niche. Any suggestions? This is something you can help me with. I'm in IT now, but not sure if I want to do it still. That's part of our program. Um, we walk you through. We can't pick your niche for you, but we will help you pick a niche. And we will show you how to pick a niche. Because I feel as a business owner in this profession, that is the most important decision anybody makes and that's where most people make mistakes so I you know I'm just like oh my god you know that you know I, I will spend time talking to you because I want to make sure you know that you're picking the right niche this is also confidential how do I keep a staffing firm role and prospect well I prospect for my own clients how do you separate that mentally with integrity let's see how do I keep a staffing firm role and prospect well I prospect for my own clients I don't understand your question because I don't know what you're currently doing. Um, what I would suggest when we get off this phone, why don't you call me because I'm not sure what you mean by that question. Um, and, and you've got to be very ethical and above board. So, you know, if in fact, you know, I'm not sure I understand what that question is. So if you would call me, Stephanie, when this call is over, I'd be glad to answer any questions. Or you can talk to Jody. Uh, Jody is my VP of sales and she could probably help you or me. Either of us would be glad to talk to you. This is from Michael. I work as a consultant in healthcare IT and would like to move over to recruiting consultant like myself while still consulting and then eventually move out of consulting and do recruiting full time. What's the best approach to do this as far as marketing the clients? How do I set up my LinkedIn profile to represent myself as a consultant and recruiter? We can help you with that, Michael, because you're right. And, and I'm telling you, most consulting firms, it's interesting. Um, when I was, when I was at, um, when I was at the TechServe Alliance conference, and I just got back from there this past week, I would say 40% of the people attending the TechServe Alliance, and TechServe Alliance, they represent IT and engineering contractors. And, um, and so most of the IT consulting firms ended up opening a staffing firm as part of their consulting firm because they realized that, and half of them now are making more money on the IT staffing firm than they are on their IT consulting firm. And they complement each other. So it's not like you're going to be in conflict with each other at all. You know, so you're going to you're going to be able to do both and we can walk you through how to do that. You know, but a lot of the IT consulting firms, you know, um, you know, basically do, you know, do exactly that. They do consulting and they do staffing. Because it just it just you know a lot, probably a lot of the consulting you're doing, you know, for your clients, you realize Michael, they need talent. So you're almost there anyway. If someone is starting out with no database of candidates, should we start and direct hire a contract? It depends on the niche, Jim, and it depends on, on what you personally want to do. I always say start on both, you know, and it also depends on your financial situation. If you do contract, you'll make money quicker. If you do direct, the fees are much larger, but you're going to wait, you know, three or four months before you start generating a full-time fee. So it depends on a lot of variables, and once we know more about the business you're setting up, you know, we can advise you. But, you know, eventually you want to have a blended firm. You want to pick a niche where you can place both. Okay, this is, I want to keep my job, be a account manager for staffing. I'll call you. Thank you very much. If you're keeping your job, you know, when you're setting up your business on the side, you're not going to current companies that you're currently doing business with for your job. Um, that's just not ethical and it's not smart, you know. So you're going to go in a different direction 
and you're going to still put in your 40 hours for your employer. You're not going to work your business during working hours, but before you go to work, lunchtime, after work, on weekends, you can be setting up your own business. But you're never going to reach out to anybody that your current company does business with because that is unethical. Let's see. This is from Jean Claude or Jean Claude. I want to be able to recruit talent detects throughout this the Bay Area. How can I gain trust with the clients to give me a shot? It seems a tight niche. Are they only dealing with trusted firms, recruiters? Is it your rates or quality? They are concerned about how to get them to say yes. We'll give you a shot. I'm telling you what works in today's marketplace is marketing candidates. And we always have you start on the recruiting side. You don't go out there and try to find clients first. Because if you find a client and then you don't have candidates to give them, you lose credibility right up front before you've even started. And it's going to take you time to establish a database and to get people. And by the time you do that, somebody else is going to fill the job. So what we have you do is pick the title, pick your niche, pick the six titles you're going to place in, and start out by interviewing the candidates because they're going to give you inside information on the companies that they've worked for. They're going to tell you where they like to work most, where they didn't like to work, and why, how many people worked at those companies. All their past employers are targets for you because now you've got inside information and you know they hire this kind of candidate because you've interviewed this person. So once you interview 10 people that do a certain job, You've got 30 companies that you know things about, and you can make informed calls. You're also going to ask everybody you interview, where do you want to work and why? Where would you never want to work and why? And imagine, Jean-Claude, if I called you and said, Jean-Claude, I'd normally be calling my best client, but let me explain why I've called you instead. If I start out with that, normally I'd be calling my best client, but I, I wanted to reach out to you instead. You're wondering why. Well, number one, you know I've got a best client. And why did I call you rather than calling my best client? I'm then going to explain, you know, what my best clients like me to be proactive for them. If I surface talent that is just outstanding, and I'm going to give something very specific about the candidate I'm representing, they want me to pick up the phone and let them know when I've got this kind of person. But when I ask this person where they want to work, they said your firm. And let me explain why. Because you ask candidates, where do you want to work and why? Where would you never want to work and why? And so you tell them why. And before I picked up the phone and called you, Jean-Claude, I've also gone and looked at your LinkedIn profile. I've, I've set up a Google alert for your company, and I'm getting all the information on your company. So I know a lot about your company, and I know a lot about you before I call and market this candidate. And so, you know, I'm going to say, and so, you know, what would it take to get the two of you together? You might say, well, I'm not hiring anybody right now. My next question is going to be, is there anybody on your current team you've thought about upgrading? Because almost everybody out there has people working for them that they'd love to upgrade. And they haven't even told HR. They're just not happy with people that are working for them. And now when you ask that question and you've got a rock star you're representing, it works. It works. And then if they say, no, there's nothing. You know, let me ask you another question, Jean-Claude. What positions are hard for you to fill? You know, uh, when you're looking forward, are there, is there anything you're currently working on uh, that you'd like to improve your results on? You know, and you're going to find out what are the hardest positions to open or do they have a company they respect. If you get somebody out of that company, should you call them? And all these scripts are in our program. We walk you through step-by-step step how to do this. This is Darius. I understand the temp industry runs about 35 to 40% margin over the base salary on contracting. What is the margin range generally? Um, and it's not, it's not a 30, 30 to 35% markup um, over the base salary in temp. Um, sometimes it's even lower than that, Darius. And contracting, you know, they their markup is going to be higher. I mean, and it depends on the niche. The higher the niche, the higher the margin. You know, uh, I, some companies are at a 75%, you know, markup. But then you've got the burden you pay out of the markup. You know, you've got to pay the, you know, the, the taxes and the, you know, because these contractors have benefits and, and you're the employer. Or you use a funding company that does that for you. So, you know, the markups are all, all over the board, but I can tell you, I guarantee you, that the markups in the contract staffing industry are much higher than the markups in temporary. Confidential, I'm in healthcare and I want to know if you're more experienced in healthcare recruitment, if, if you are more experienced in healthcare recruitment and temp placement. Um, I, have many, I have many clients that are in healthcare. The only thing I want to talk to you about is if you go into the healthcare niche, anything medical, and if you're going to place people that have, you know, like local tenums, you know, it's, it's not temp staffing in in the medical field. They're called local tenants. And it's a total different process. But if you go into the medical niche and you're placing people that interact with patients, um, you, you have credentialing that you have to do. 
the insurances are much higher. And so the cost of going into healthcare is much higher than any other niche out there. So you have to have more money put aside because you've got to check credentialing on all on all candidates, not just the ones you place. You can't submit them unless you've done credentialing, and credentialing can cost you a few hundred dollars a person. And so, you know, it, it's a very expensive niche to get into. Do I have clients that are in the medical niche? Yes. And the startup tutor, will we be shown how to get candidates and clients? And where to search them? Yes. I mean, that's what the program is. It shows you how to get clients. It shows you how to get candidates. 20 days of the 80-day 80, 80 tutor are 100% recruiting training. 20 days are 100% you know, marketing training. And then the other, you know, the other 40 days are just other things, teaching you how to interview, how to check references. So yes, there are scripts in there and, and we show you how to do that. But it's not the startup tutor that shows you how to get candidates and clients. The startup tutor shows you how to set up your business and make all the right decisions when you're setting up your business. That 24-week course helps you pick your niche, helps you make all the decisions you need to set up a business properly. The training program, the tutor that's in there, teaches you, you know, how to get the candidates and clients. Let's see. Thanks, Barb. How much will it cost for me to start my home business typically? Um, in addition, if you decide to, you know, invest in our program, obviously I gave the price. It's under $4,000 now because we're giving a discount. To start your own business, the only cost you're going to have is you have to have a very dependable computer uh, or a laptop, you know, either, you know, a hardware or a laptop. You need a landline in your home and you need two lines coming in because you don't want people to get a busy tone. You cannot only have a business using your cell phone because you don't want to give your cell phone out to candidates because it'll drive you nuts. And so you need a, a landline at home with two lines so you can, you know, juggle a couple calls. You need a, a very uh, dependable smartphone and good Wi-Fi. That's it. Everything else will give you. So you don't need forms. You don't need anything. I mean, and obviously, if you don't with our program, you need to get a website. You need, you need to do those things. But um, it really, the cost of entry in this profession is not a lot, you know, because, you know, basically our tools are the computer and the phone. Let's see. How do we compete with the larger companies in the contract side when we do not have a database of candidates and manpower? They, we answered that question in the program. Uh, and I think I answered it earlier that what you're going to do is you're going to start on the candidate side. So you are going to have a candidate database before you reach out to clients. You're going to interview 10 people that have six titles. And each person is going to result in you getting two more candidates. So when you interview 60, you're going to end up with 180 candidates and a ton of client leads. So, you know, our program goes step by step and shows you how to do this. Let's see. I've only been thinking about this for two months, but want to invest. Would you let me invest? Um, if you've only been thinking about this two months, um, I would need to ask you some questions. You've got to make sure that this is not something that you're going to regret down the road. You know, and what I would suggest you do is if you want to make a decision, draw two capital T's on a piece of paper and put down stay in my job at the top of one and start my own business on the top of the other one and list all the pros and cons. Um, and I'm going to share something personal with all of you. When I was getting a divorce, um, I, I was, you know, I had small children and I, I, I was scared to death. You know, no one in my family had ever gotten a divorce. I believe in the vows, but I had situations going on where I was faced with, you know, possibly getting a divorce. I T-squared it out. I had over 100 reasons why I should stay married. I had almost 400 reasons why I should get a divorce. I mean, I worked on that list for months. And when I finally saw how many more reasons there were to leave, I finally left. But I still came up with 100 reasons to stay. There's always going to be reasons to stay in your job. But if you've only thought about this for a little while, do the T-squares, you know, pros and cons of staying where I'm at or pros and cons of starting my own business. And one of them, the pros is going to far outnumber the pros on the other side. And then you've got your decision because this is an emotional decision. And unless you write it down, if you're trying to make up your mind what to do in your head, you're going to procrastinate and you're never going to do it. And you're going to lose a lot of opportunity. Once you write it down, here's the pros and cons of doing what I'm doing now. Here's the pros and cons. Or if you're any, any decision you're making, put the two choices you've got and list pros and cons, and your decision is there. And you've got to be decisive if you're going to own your own business. If you're not decisive, don't go into business because you're going to be faced with a ton of decisions, and you, won't, you will not succeed unless you're a very decisive person. And so the fact that you've only thought about this two months and you're ready to move forward, I just worry, have you really thought it out enough? So do the T-square, and if, you, if the pros of owning your own business far outnumber the pros of staying where you are now, 
then give us a call and I'd love to work with you because I love that after 60 days you're ready to roll. Confidential, if you've only been on the account management side, you need experience with recruiting and headhunting to start a business. Would you recommend going to a firm and being a recruiter for experience? I want to start right now. No, because if you go to a firm and you get experience recruiting, number one, not that many firms have good training programs. So you're probably going to learn by fire anyway. And we'll show you how to recruit. We'll teach you how to do that. And if you go to work for somebody else, you're going to sign a non-compete agreement. So for one year after you work there, you cannot contact any candidates you've made contact with. And so you're going to work for somebody else. And then for a year, you can't call any of those candidates. And so you're going to build business for somebody else, not yourself. You do not need to know how to recruit to start your own business. We'll teach you how to recruit. We will teach you how to do that. Um, let's see. I don't see any other questions. So all I'm going to say to all of you is, you know, it is, you know, look at the date. We've got this on the table um, for a limited period of time. And so if, in fact, you're thinking about this, please call my office and talk to either Jody or myself. We'd be glad to answer, you know, any questions you have. Um, but if you're really thinking um, that this is what you want to do, you need to do it. Okay, somebody's um, asking me, is it okay to do lower margins? Yes. You can work at lower margins, but I want, I'm going to tell you another story. When I first went out there, I was doing light industrial temp. And so I had a light industrial temp business, and I live in Indiana. And so I had all the steel mills. And I would go out in the steel mills, and I would place, you know, forklift drivers. I, would, I placed at all five plants for um, United States Steel. So I placed guys in the blast furnace. I placed people in the sheet and tin mill. I mean, I placed all light industrial temps. I had a pager. And I was paged morning, noon, and night, seven days a week because they work three shifts. I mean, it was a nightmare. And I had worked, I had a very lucrative light industrial temp business, and there was no health care reform act. So my margins were decent. And then what happened to me is I had Manpower and Kelly Service and Norrell move into my city all within like two months of each other. And I had one of those firms go in and underbid me by, a, by like 40 cents under my cost. And I was like, and I finally went to the person. I said, you can't possibly do this business for that cost. When you take workman's comp and the burden, you've got to be losing money with your bid. And the guy looked at me and said, we can lose money for a year. Um, we can lose money for up to a year. Well, as a small business, I couldn't lose money for up to a year. And so I didn't know what I was going to do. So I, I, put, I, wrote, I reached out to all the temporary workers I had. And I had hundreds of guys working for me. And I said, guys, this particular year, I'm not going to be able to give you a Christmas bonus. I might not be able to pay for family coverage anymore. I'm going to have to cut back a little bit because I've got some real competitors. But I, I understand you've got a family and you've got yourself to worry about. Can you ride this out with me for a year? Or, you know, would you have to go with a person that can pay you more? And 95% of my temporary workers said that they, they would rather go where they could be, make more money. And it killed me because I had been working with these guys for five years. I had given them loans. I mean, they were like my family. Um, I invited them to a Christmas party. I mean, I, they, were my, they were my guys. And so what I did is I removed my bid. And I walked out of the bid. And I was a single mom at the time. And I'm like, what am I going to do? Like, 75% of my business just walked out the door, and I still was doing business with some other mills, not just U.S. Still, but I lost the U.S. Still bid, which was 75% of my business. Well, that taught me, number one, never to have a client that makes up more than 15% of your business ever, okay? And the guys at the mill said, we can't believe they're not going to use you. Why don't you place engineers? And at that time, I was in my 20s, and I said, there's not enough trains in these mills to have that many engineers, and they go, no, Barb, like mechanical, electrical, civil engineers, project, and I didn't know what those were. So they taught me what engineers did, and I realized I could place one engineer and make the same profit I was making on 18 of my light industrial temp workers, and they weren't getting hurt as much. I wasn't getting as many phone calls, and they were keeping them for six months, a year, 18 months. So you can, you can do whatever business you want, and if you want to do a business where it's lower margins, you can do that. I just, I just usually, you know, try to convince you to go higher. Um, given I'm in South Africa, can you help me? Yes, I can. In fact, I spent a month in South Africa two years ago, and I trained in Johannesburg and Durban and uh, Cape Town, and I'm trying to think of some of the other areas I went. I spent one month 
training everybody in South Africa. So I know your marketplace very well. And many people in South Africa are my clients. In fact, some of the largest firms in South Africa are my training clients. So yes, I can help you because everything is web-based. And so we can help you in South Africa. I've got clients that, that use my training in 12 countries. And so, in fact, I just landed another country. Uh, some people from Ukraine were at one of the conferences, and now I'm going to train their team in Ukraine. So I guess I now have a new country that I'm training for. Um, but, yes, I can help you no matter where you are. All right, I'm going to let all of you go. If you've got any questions, call my office. I greatly thank you for being here. And let's make this the year that you finally make the leap and you take control of yourself, your destiny, your income, and the lifestyle that you're living. And we're here to help you. Thanks, everybody, for joining me. I certainly hope that, you know, we talk to a lot of you. Have a great evening and a great day. And for those of you in the United States, happy Thanksgiving. And uh, I'm thankful that you're all on this call. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.